Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. It's midsummer here in the Appalachian Mountains. I'm at about 2,700 feet, and I'm actually just outside my door. I can see my house up here through the woods. I'm standing next to a dead birch tree here, and I've got this magnificent oyster mushroom right here on the tree, and a couple more just above me. Today's episode is about carnivorous mushrooms. I put in the title, T-Rex move over. Here's a carnivorous mushroom to rival you. So this is really a very, very lethal predator. It feeds on nematode worms or in this tree in order to get nitrogen. So stay tuned for this episode. I'm gonna talk a little bit about this highly desirable edible and give you some background on it and talk about how it is actually a carnivorous mushroom. So stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. So let's begin with looking at the scientific name of this fungus. I love talking about the scientific names and breaking them down, especially because in this case, it will reveal how to identify properly this particular fungus. The scientific name is Pleurotus ostriatus. Pleurotus means side ear and refers to the sideways growth of the mushroom with respect to the stem. The species name, ostriatus, refers to the common name of this mushroom, which is oyster mushroom. And it refers to the shape of the cap that looks like the bivalve from the ocean, an oyster. The reference to the oyster may also describe the slippery texture of this particular mushroom. So this mushroom has a broad oyster-shaped cap that extends from rotting wood, from logs, and from trees. Usually a stem is barely present, but when there is a stem, the gills of the mushroom descend down onto that stalk as they do here. Very white to creamy white. The stipe, you'll notice, is always off-center, which again ties back to its scientific name, side ear, because it's off-center. You can find oyster mushrooms growing on dying hardwoods. It's not parasitic on them. It doesn't cause them to die. They're merely acting as saprophytes feeding on the dead and decaying wood. The oyster mushroom is also a choice edible. It's considered a delicacy in much of Asia, including China, Korea, and Japan, and it's frequently served on its own or in soups or in stir-fry recipes. Oyster mushrooms are also used in sauces, such as the famous oyster sauce. And here in America, it is highly sought after and highly desired for an edible. Usually it's found growing in the winter or, or late winter. And here, this is midsummer, so this is a sort of a midsummer oyster mushroom. Now let's talk carnivory. So this mushroom actually feeds on and is a predator on tiny nematode worms that live in decaying things. Nematodes play a big role in the decay process. Microscopic examination of the hypha, or the threads of this fungi that intertwine into the decaying wood, show these lollipop-like structures. These lollipop-like structures that extend from the hypha are called toxicists. If a nematode worm touches one of those, it's immediately paralyzed. There's a very powerful paralytic toxin that is released by these toxicists the moment a worm touches it. And it acts within 60 seconds, paralyzing that worm, and then the hypha take over and digest it. Why is this fungus carnivorous? Why does it need to kill and eat nematode worms? Well, it lives in a very nitrogen poor habitat. Decaying wood is made up of cellulose and cellulose is made up of basically carbohydrates. So as the fungi decays this cellulose and breaks it down into carbohydrates it can use, it finds itself without other nutrients like 
particularly nitrogen. Nitrogen can be a limiting factor for the growth of both fungi and plants. Nitrogen is needed for proteins. So this mushroom seeks out nematode worms to kill and eat as a source of nitrogen. There are other fungi that also will eat nematode worms, and some of them have ingenious methods to do it. Some hypha have little lassoes on them, which constrict around the nematode worm that passes through them, and then they release digestive enzymes and consume it. So these oyster mushrooms, highly desired by fungal collectors that go out to look for mushrooms to eat, these can also be raised at home on straw and, and on sawdust and decaying wood. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about this carnivorous fungi. It's really kind of outside the norm, and it's so fascinating to learn the details of how different organisms survive like this particular one. Remember, if you like my channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and remember I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes and turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. So thanks again for watching this episode on the carnivorous oyster mushroom I'm here in the Appalachian Mountains, right here just outside my door.